Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul and if you're new here, a very, very warm welcome. If you're a returning visitor, then I'm pleased to see you again. Now today's recipe is a blast from the past. It's something I don't see many people making or even talking about today. It's called an apple charlotte. It's a very, very economical sweet or pudding to make because it's made with just a few ingredients which I'll show you in a moment. <music> So we have the, the apples, some sugar, that's white sugar, can be granulated or a castor, it makes no difference. Some butter, a little apricot marmalade, um, we call it marmalade in Spain, apricot jam, I'm sorry, and some stale bread with the crust cut off. Another optional is if you want, you don't have to. I'm using an eighth of a teaspoon there, it is in the recipe, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. You can use nutmeg or you can use cinnamon, but I prefer to use cloves. So those are the ingredients and I'll show you how to put them together. Okay, now here we are. I'm melting 25 grams of the butter in the pan here. And then I'm I've chopped the apples into smallish pieces, as you can see, three quarters of an inch or an inch, something like that. And they're going to go in there with the butter. On top of that, we're going to add the sugar. And give that a stir. And on top of that, I'm going to add the eighth of a teaspoon of cloves. As I said, that's optional. You can use clove, you can use nutmeg, you can use cinnamon, but I prefer the clove for apples. Let's give it a little stir again. And now we're going to pop the lid on that. And we're going to let that cook gently on a medium high heat. For about five minutes. Give it a little stir occasionally during the five minutes cooking. Put the lid back on and we'll leave it for the rest of the five minutes. Okay the five minutes are up now so we'll remove the lid, give them a stir and I don't know if you can see there but I'll try and show you how much liquid has actually come I don't know whether you can you see that how much liquid has come out of the apples remember we didn't put any liquid in all we put in was that little bit of butter so we're now going to cook this for a further five or six minutes without the lid because we want to get rid of some of that juice and we want the apples to mush down a little bit more than they are doing we don't want to make them like apple sauce we want to, some texture in them but we don't want big lumps like this so I'm going to leave that for another five or six minutes now, just stirring it occasionally, and I'll be back shortly. It's starting to break down a little bit now. Now these apples were a little underripe, so they haven't broken down as much as I would have liked them, but never mind. They will be going to cook again in the when we get them into the uh, pudding basin. So at this stage now, we're going to add the apricot jam. And we're going to need about four tablespoons, not great big heaped ones, just four tablespoons. Mix that up, turn the heat off, just stir that to dissolve the apricot jam. That's going to give them a nice warm colour, you can see in there. Now that needs to cool right down. We can't use that while it's warm, hot or warm. It needs to cool right down, so leave that now. And whilst we're letting that cool, I'll show you what we do with the bread and the uh, pudding basin. 
Okay, we're going to deal with the bread now. Before we do that, a little tip. When you're cutting anything on a board like this, whether it's on your work surface or on your draining board or what, if you put a damp cloth underneath, a damp dishcloth, put that on top, then it won't slide anywhere. It won't be going anywhere at all. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a pudding basin. Now, this morning, I actually broke my pudding basin I was going to use. It was this sort of thing, only it was larger, and I dropped it. So I haven't got the pudding basin I was going to use. So I'm going to use this steel one today. Anything that's oven proof will do. And we're going to line it with the bread. Now, <clears throat> first of all, use the slices of bread with the crust removed, as I mentioned earlier when I was showing you the ingredients. And you can use stale bread for this. This is two or three days old. I normally, if I have bread left, I take the crusts off and I put it in the freezer and I keep it then for things like this or like uh, bread and butter pudding, etc. Okay, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a cutter that's reasonably the size of the bottom of your basin because we need something for the base. So we'll, we'll use that and we'll keep that to one side. Now the rest of them we're going to cut into strips. We're going to cut them in half that way. And we're going to cut them again. We need enough of these strips of bread to go around the outside of the basin. Well, and we're going to keep one slice for gluing of the top. That's the bottom. This is for the top. Okay. So what I've done here is I've melted the rest of the butter. I just did it in the microwave. And I've got my basin. And what we're going to do is we're going to dip the bread gently into the butter, both sides. And then we're going to stand it inside the basin to line it, just like this. Oops. Okay, so now we've got the bread all nicely sorted into the um, into the basin. There's just a little hole there. I'm just going to plug up. Now we're going to put in the apple into the pudding basin. Now you can have a look at that. That's the consistency of the apple is now it's cooled. And to put that in there. Make sure it's right into the bottom, into the corners. And that's all the kilo of apples that's cooked down and is nicely settled in there. Next we have to put the lid on. Now what I've done is I've cut a, a piece of bread with a larger bread, uh, uh, pastry cutter and I'm going to just soak that two bits because my slices were a little bit small for this basin and we're going to pop that on top like this. There's a little bit there I'm going to just fill the hole in and a little bit at this side I'm going to just fill a hole in. This doesn't have to be very very neat but there we are. That's all ready to go into the oven now. Just wipe my fingers and what I'm going to do is it's going in at 180 for an ordinary oven or 160 for a fan oven but I am going to put it on a baking tray just in case we have any boil out. So there we are that's going in the oven for 30 minutes or until it's nice golden brown and crispy on top. I'll see you shortly. So now it's cooled slightly and what I'm going to try and do is to take it out of the out of, out of the a basin and let's hope and pray it stays in one piece. 
still very hot that. Well, if you've enjoyed the video, go underneath, give it a thumbs up, and if you have any comments, suggestions, or requests, pop them underneath there as well. I do read them all and answer as many as I possibly can. Now, <clears throat> if you haven't subscribed already, I'd like you to do so because it helps the channel grow. And if when you do press the subscribe button, you'll see a little bell icon at the side. And if you click on that, you will be informed every time I put up a new video. So, this is Mr. Paul saying bye for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye!